Welcome to Lecture 3, How N is Lost from the Soil. It is the Nitrogen Cycle Series presented by Howard Brown. I want to welcome you. Uh, this is the recorded session. Today we're going to talk about how nitrogen is lost when we're considering the nitrogen cycle. And the avenues of loss uh, would include plant uptake, denitrification, which is something uh, related to last week only in an opposite direction, uh, volatilization, loss as a gas, leaching, movement with water, and immobilization. It really doesn't go away, it just it gets tied in, up in a form that the plant cannot utilize. Now I would like to add an amendment to last lecture. I think I needed to emphasize a point a little more than I did, and that would be on nitrification. I want you to fully understand nitrification because we're talking about denitrification today. Nitrification is a conversion of ammonium N to nitrate N. Now it's not at this point important to understand the structure because we'll get into chemistry when we get there, but there's properties that are different between ammonium and nitrate. Ammonium has a positive charge to it, nitrate has a negative charge. Those differences makes it behave differently in the soil. Ammonium is therefore held by the soil because it's got a positive charge and the soil is negative, kind of like a north and south pole. On the other hand, nitrate has a negative charge. If the soil is, has a net negative charge and nitrate's negative, then nitrate doesn't want to hold onto the soil, so it moves with water. Ammonium is held by the soil, nitrates move with water. Plants can take up both forms of nitrogen whether it be ammonium or nitrate. And then here is just going through the steps of nitri nitrification in a simplistic way. We start with ammonium. We have to have oxygen because this is microbially driven. This, this is living organisms driving the change or the transformation of ammonium to nitrate. So ammonium with oxygen in the presence of a bacteria we call nitrous ammonis. Uh, changes or, or transforms ammonium to a, a product called nitrite. Nitrite doesn't hang around very long because there's another bacteria in the soil that converts nitrite quickly when in the presence of oxygen, soil, air, to nitrate. And remember, ammonium is held by the soil. Nitrate moves with water. So when we talk about uh, nitrogen moving out of the field and tiles and into ditches, rivers, and eventually into the Gulf or some large body of water. We're talking specifically about the nitrate form. It's, it's a rare occasion where you hear people talking about free ammonia in water or uh, the ammonium kind of form in, in water. It's, it's normally nitrates. And one last thing about nitrification, it has to have microbial activity in order to occur. So we have to have an environment conducive for uh, organism growth. Uh, we have to have oxygen, of course, we have to have a little bit of water, but we have to have warmth. We have to have temperatures that allow biological activity. So if the soils are frozen, none of this will happen. Now, losses. Plant uptake, ways we lose plant up, uh, nitrogen by plant uptake, of course, it goes in. And since nitrogen is the one nutrient of the essential nutrients and needed in the largest volume, uh, we need all kinds of avenues to get it in and it's very important that we get a lot of nitrogen in. And the main way then all the nutrients get into the plant is with soil water. Basically, basically all nutrients must move into the plant via or through soil water. Now when we talk about this, since it's moving with water, I just had mentioned earlier ammonium, that other form of nitrogen a plant can have, holds onto the soil. So we don't anticipate a lot of ammonium going in with water because it's kind of held uh, by the charge of the soil. So it must move in as nitrates. And the value of nitrates moving with water is that over 95% of the water that the plant utilizes throughout the growing season, over 95% is used specifically for keeping the plant cool. So as a result, as the water goes into the plant and evaporates from the leaf surfaces, we call that transpiration, then it pulls enough nitrogen in, hopefully, to meet the plant's demand. And when we talk about plant uptake, we anticipate a plant's going to need about 275 pounds of nitrogen per acre when we think about a corn, corn crop in here in the east central part of Illinois about 275 pounds by the end of the season to optimize yield for the farmer. That means 
there has to be on an acre basis 275 pounds go into the plants. Now another avenue of loss is denitrification. Now denitrification is the process of nitrate being converted to a gas and lost to the atmosphere and specifically the soil atmosphere but eventually gets out into the the big atmosphere that that we constantly are breathing then so denitrification is a loss process it happens when the soil is saturated and microbes are involved so what happens like in this picture the microbes in the soil need oxygen well there's no oxygen because all the pore space in this case is filled with water so they grab the the nearest oxygen source and uh, they tend to grab an oxygen off of nitrate nitrate has three oxygens and when one of the nitrates are removed by the microbes it becomes an unstable gas and it is lost to the atmosphere now when we talk about this in the spring of the year when the soils are warm and the farmers put all of his nitrogen that's when we have a lot of concern and a, a, not only from an economic point of view is this a challenge but it's also a challenge to us from an environmental point of view because some of the gases produced by denitrification of nitrogen actually are considered a very uh, potent global warming gas in fact so potent that the gas nitrous oxide produced from denitrification is about 300 times more potent as a global warming gas than carbon dioxide. And agriculture is the one that uses the nitrogen so people will turn eventually to agriculture to help mitigate or to minimize uh, loss of nitrous oxide as a result of commercial nitrogen use on, on our field crops. The next avenue of loss, volatilization. Now volatilization pretty much is what it sounds like. It goes off, it's volatile. And actually the nitrogen with volatilization is lost before the nitrogen actually enters the soil. And basically volatilization will occur with top dressed urea or urea containing fertilizers. And when we say that urea is a fertilizer and there's another uh, fertilizer that contains a lot of urea and that's urea ammonium nitrate, UAN, or commonly called 28 or 32% nitrogen. And this volatilization takes, takes place relatively soon after the application, probably within a couple of days. And it's pretty much over within seven days to 10 days. And in worst case situations, you could lose up to 40% of the nitrogen if it's left on the surface and not incorporated to minimize the, the volatilization losses. The volatilization is affected by a lot of soil uh, properties, uh, soil pH, temperature, residue cover. It's not microbially driven. It's driven by an enzyme in the soil, but it is driven by many of the same attributes that we talk about when we talk about other ways or avenues of nitrogen loss, but it's, it's more of a chemical loss. The, hopefully we'll have a demonstration there in the next couple of weeks that you'll be able to set up and you'll be able to, to determine whether or not uh, volatilization occurs because when we have volatilization it goes off as free ammonia gas and we all know that ammonia has its own original smell so we'll we'll see if we can demonstrate volatilization there as a kind of a, a mini lab project. And when we do this, uh, we do this project to make sure you smell the containers uh, carefully because it'll be a very pungent, very, very strong odor. So you may want to be able to, to hold it in front of you and kind of uh, brush your hand toward your face and kind of make the smell come in directly uh, to your nose because it, it kind of is very strong. And this will demonstrate, and there'll be a couple of treatments I'll show you, and we'll show how to minimize this uh, with, with the demonstration that I have. The next loss avenue is leaching. Leaching is actually movement with water. And a lot of times when we get these rains in our soils, and remember the soil has, has pore space, 25% of that nat the normal soil, their standard soil is pores that are filled with air. Well, when it rains, those pores actually fill with water. And of course, there's another 25% with water too, but water actually percolates through the profile. And many times farmers, at least in our areas, have what we call subsurface tile drainage. So they put these tubes under the soil surface about three feet deep and the water can reach these tubes and then the water leaves the field and goes into ditches. And the, when the water moves through the profile, it takes the, some of the solutes or some of the nutrients that are free to move with it, such as nitrate, because remember, nitrates are negatively charged. They don't hold onto the soil, they move with water. 
So when we talk about leaching losses, uh, we actually will increase leaching losses of nitrogen, or specifically nitrate, when we continually add more subsurface drainage tiles because there's avenues by which we get the water off the field. And what these subsurface drainage tiles will do is they connect the surface to the subsurface and give the nitrogen an avenue of loss. So that's not tragic, it's just the fact we have to pay attention to this because if we get things out of balance, if we put on too much nitrogen, it's not utilized by the plant, there's a good chance some of it may find its way into the tile water, which is, has both an economic and an environmental consequence. Here's an example of us tracking tile water over uh, over time in four different tile lines and I just want to point out what this tells us now this is just concentration it's not telling us how many pounds that we're losing it's not what we call loading it's just concentration but the first time we check these tiles you see the differences and the first uh, three tiles that you see had fall applied nitrogen the one tile on the bottom had no fall applied nitrogen. Now this is in, I think you're looking at the end of, of November. And so what this indicates to me, basically is that since this is concentration, there's a chance that when the full nitrogen was applied, there's some of it leaking out through the tile lines as a result, or there's not more nitrogen lo being lost from those fields. Now, if you look later in the growing season, a little about mid part of May, we put on a side dress application of nitrogen and notice the differences, the three top tiles, there's a higher concentration, meaning there's, uh, there's an avenue by which the nitrogen is getting into the subsurface tile or it's further down into the profile for one reason or another, but it's indicative of, of what's going on in the field. So it sends up a flag saying, okay, we need to look at this nitrogen management system for the farmer and see if we can figure out how the next time we do this, the next time a crop is grown where we use nitrogen, maybe we can minimize that increase in the concentration of nitrate in the tile water so that we don't lose as much of the nitrogen. Because remember, when we lose nitrogen, specifically nitrates into tile water, it's not only an environmental consequence, but it's an economic consequence because there is no farmer that wants to buy an input for a, for a crop so that he loses it into a, a tile water and he loses his investment. Now, the last avenue of loss is called immobilization. It's really not loss, it's just nitrogen gets tied up and the plant can't have it. So you can think of it as a temporary loss, but we can still get it back. Immobilization is the conversion of plant available nitrogen uh, or forms that are available for plant uptake and it's converting it to a, a plant unavailable forms. Now one way of looking at it, you can say immobilization is going from plant available to plant unavailable. If you're with a chemistry uh, way of thinking, it's going from or, uh, inorganic nitrogen, which is plant available, to organic nitrogen, which is plant unavailable. And as you can see, this involves a microbial population. So in order for immobilization to take place, we have to have the environment for microbial activity, which is uh, we have to have oxygen, of course, we have to have <coughs> temperature, uh, uh, and we have to have an environment by which the microbes can be active and moisture. Now here are the losses we've talked about today. If I go through each one of these first, we talked about plant uptake, which is kind of common, both nitrates and ammonium taken up by the plant. We had gaseous loss or denitrification, the conversion of nitrate nitrogen into unstable gaseous forms as a result of microbial activity in the absence of oxygen. We also talked about volatilization, which is the gaseous loss of nitrogen before it enters the soil and it's primarily uh, thought of as, as being an avenue by which losing nitrogen with urea or urea containing fertilizers. We talked about leaching, the simple movement of nitrate nitrogen negatively charged with water since the soil doesn't hold on. We call that movement with water or leaching. And then finally, immobilization, which is a temporary loss or a tie up by microbial activity, taking nitrogen from a plant available form nitrate and ammonium to a plant unavailable form, which is an organic form of nitrogen. Not loss, just tied up. Okay, so we've been through all of these different processes within the nitrogen cycle. So work hard to see if you can memorize each one of those and, and kind of define what each one of these means. That's going to be part of the final exam is for you to be able to identify these 
different processes and just give me a few words describing what each one of them actually uh, involve. Okay, don't want to go without uh, giving you a challenge. Assignment three, you will enjoy this assignment. Believe me, it won't be painful at all. It requires you to watch a YouTube video. And in the 30 seconds that you watch this video, all I'm asking you is to just give me a couple of comments about what you think. And that could be wow, it could be you know how boring I don't know you whatever you want but just give me some comments to let me know that you had a chance to to watch the video and then go ahead and submit it and I want to challenge you these uh, assignments that I'm giving are not tough at all if you go back you can go back and, and finish do all three so far do all if you do all the assignments I give you there'll be something special at the end of this course that you'll have that will recognize your investment in time Okay, with that said, hope you enjoyed the lecture. Look forward to talking to you next week. We're going to talk about the living, the dead, and the very dead, which adds the organic part of the uh, one of the processes of the nitrogen cycle. If you have any questions, send me an email. Give me a call. Thank you.